I like to learn new things and I like to teach them to other people. This holds true so very much, even a year later. Hello, my name is Pavel Rezhov. Thank you very much for joining me for another episode. Today I'd like to do something different. Uh, well, it seems like every time I do something, it's something a little bit different, but I think that's the nature of, uh, of a new YouTube channel. I'm trying to evolve, trying to find new ways of making content. But uh, today I'd like to show you something I haven't previously shown to, um, to many, uh, many of you, which is a video that I've made in February 2020, just after I finished my PhD. And I would like to show it because I feel right now in March 2021, Oh, uh, just a little over a year since I made that video, I feel I have uh, a lot of interesting new perspectives on how I felt at the time. I've just finished the PhD. I felt a lot of very strong emotions about uh, who I was, uh, what I've accomplished, what I haven't accomplished, what's my place in the world and what kind of job I would like to pursue and what is it that I can actually do with my life. And um, I feel uh, after a year, has passed since then. I've learned a lot about who I am, and I've, I've obviously found uh, found a job that I really enjoy uh, doing. Uh, and I think uh, it's it's a good time to to look back at that video and uh, maybe see how I feel about some of the uh, comments I made back then. So without further ado, let's get started. So this is me back in February 2020. I'm still in San Diego. It's about two weeks after I finished uh, my PhD. So let's roll the tape. Hi, my name is Pavel. So I'm a recent PhD graduate and I guess as a lot of people in my um, shoes would attest, it's not the most pleasant feeling. I'm honestly really making this video just to try and help myself and process what just happened and where am I supposed to go? Boy, oh boy, I was quite pessimistic um, back then and definitely uh, I think I was a lot more tired than uh, I am now and it definitely shows in a ton of my voice. So I'm glad I didn't release it then. I don't think it would have been uh, that interesting for people to see. But I think now, maybe with this particular commentary, I think it would be quite interesting for any PhD students who might be struggling or who have just completed their research to see that um, yes right after it might feel quite overwhelming dealing with all the stuff that you have to deal with like looking for a job and so on but eventually everything settles down and you find your your passion uh, for for doing things that you like you find your calling you find your, your dream job and everything will work out in, in the end so Let's keep watching. This has been a very interesting journey to me. It's been a journey of satisfying my own curiosity and uh, the journey of trying to find myself and uh, the journey of disappointment and progressive disappointment in science and progressive yeah. disappointment in... It's too pessimistic. I don't feel that way now, but there was some strong feelings towards the fact that I came to clear realization that science is not the same thing as research. I've actually, as a matter of fact, after that, I believe I've made a video about exact difference in my mind why science is not the same as research. And uh, having this dissatisfaction with what research is and why I wasn't prepared for it and why I ultimately didn't enjoy it as I thought I might. I think that all of this is just to show that PhD is a journey of self-discovery. In my case, I also was doing it to satisfy my own curiosity and I'm curious for any of the PhDs that are listening or watching this video, what was your motivation to do PhD and what was sort of the one thing that keeps you going or kept you going during, the, during those hard times? I'm still a scientist. I do like science. I like learning new things and, and I'm always curious about something, something new. I am a scientist uh, still, actually. That's my, my job title right now is application scientist. So that didn't change. I'm very happy about that. Now, after three and a half years of this journey, I realized that's not the path I want to continue going on. But that really leaves me with a bigger question, which is, what the hell am I supposed to do? Well, 
I figured out what I wanted to do ultimately and uh, it didn't take me just a couple of weeks or a couple of days to figure it out. It took, it took some time. And I feel every PhD should ask themselves after they're done, what do they want to do in life? I mean, ideally you want to know a little bit ahead of time than right after you graduate. But uh, in my case, it took me a little while to come to my senses in a way and uh, find out what, what is actually important uh, for me as a professional. It definitely wasn't being a bench scientist as it turned out. And uh, I walked away from that as an application scientist. I don't have to do as much intensive research. I do occasionally do experiments, but that's not the same as just doing like an R&D uh, type um, role in a pharma company or in an academic environment. So it takes time to find what, what you're passionate about. And I clearly, back then, just two weeks after my graduation, I was very much burned out by doing research, by doing bench research. But I didn't yet come to a conclusion or a certain understanding of what is it that I wanted to do instead of that. Doing that kind of research puts you in a very unique box, and small box at that, because ultimately you are really faced with trying to solve a particular question with a particular protein, with a particular technique. So if I were to sum up everything I've done, I could probably do it in one page summary. And that's a, you know, you could say that that's a shame, but that's not a shame. I think actually that speaks to the fact that I was able to manage uh, to increase, improve my science communication skills. I haven't done that actually, which is to write a one page summary of everything that I've done, but I probably could have done that. And that's there's nothing to be ashamed about that. I feel um, now, especially that uh, being able to communicate exactly what it is that you're doing in to other scientists or to uh, to just a member of the public is a crucial transferable skill for any PhD scientist. And uh, you can argue that the reason I was saying that was because I felt like I haven't done enough. But then again, I feel anybody that I've talked to who has completed a PhD would tell the same thing. They haven't done enough. They wish they could have spent a little bit extra time completing that one little project or whatever. Uh, that's uh, that's normal feeling, and uh, there science is endless. So and research in particular is endless. So there is always something that we could have done, but we haven't. Then that's okay. I'm not prepared for what's out there as effectively as I want to be prepared for what's out there in a larger world in a context of drug discovery, patient engagement, clinical trials, you name it. So many different things that are out there that have nothing to do with the science that I was doing. Another revelation I had was doing the PhD really meant being detached from the outside world, from the outside perspective on the advances in technology, advances in our understanding of you know, science as a whole and... That is, um, that is partially true uh, because I even now strongly believe that being in a PhD again puts you in this box and you have very tunneled vision about uh, everything and this leaves very little room for learning about uh, things that are happening at the same time in a larger world, seeing the big picture, seeing new discoveries, seeing innovation across so many different uh, technology sectors, research uh, areas, and that puts you in a disadvantage in a way, unless you, again, you keep track of all that stuff. Uh, it puts you in a disadvantage when you are trying to emerge from that and trying to find a job in the industry specifically, because unless you keep tabs on everything that's going on, it's very hard to really grasp what's happened in the last few years. It's not like you've been living under a rock for a month. You've been living under a rock, under PhD rock, in some ways for four or five years. And uh, the amount of information that sort of uh, you might be exposed to by the time you're done can be overwhelming. And this is what we would typically say uh, is called an imposter syndrome. And um, while we can learn all of that in fairly short amount of time, it's worth paying attention to things that are happening throughout your PhD. Uh, being subscribed to uh, news, um, uh, news mail, uh, uh, like mail letters, and uh, just trying to 
stay in touch with uh, your colleagues in other areas in other industries to be aware that things are still happening as you are doing your research and um, it's it's very crucial point but i feel it's a little bit exaggerated in this particular example that i feel like i've just missed out on everything i haven't but that's granted i was just i just finished my phd i felt quite overwhelmed basically now sort of emerging if you will from this journey uh, really makes me scared about what can i really offer to uh, the community uh, based on the skills that i've acquired or haven't acquired rather and i think that's something that a lot of people say and that's what's called imposter syndrome or something like that yeah. and i think maybe people experience it in slightly different ways uh, but to me, it just means I think I've missed out on some things, and I think my skill set is not necessarily up to the standard of what may be required out there. But having said uh, that's not true, Pavel. And uh, now, a year later, I could tell you, you're fine. <laughs> that you can ignore everything that I've just said because I honestly have no idea what am I supposed to do in life. And that's a, a different type of discussion. That is kind of still true even to this day. I mean, I know I ha now I have a lot more clarity about what is it that I want to do, but ultimately I'm still flying blind, as it were. <laughs> if I were to try and break down what place can I fit in in terms of my skill set, I can probably break it down like this. And I try and explain this to people whenever somebody asks me, so what do you, what do you like to do and things like that. I basically say there's like two things that I like to do in life. I like to learn new things and I like to teach them to other people. This holds true so very much, even a year later. In fact, I still use the same kind of explanation when somebody asks me about what an application scientist does. And that's so funny because I... I you could see that back then I had an idea of what is it that I wanted to do, but I didn't necessarily have a true understanding of a job, of corresponding job title. And uh, fortunately, I, since I had an idea of what is it that I wanted to do, I maybe positioned myself uh, in my resumes or on LinkedIn and just in conversations with people, potential uh, people that I would be applying to, in the way that I would try and portray uh, those two sides of myself. And I think that has helped me to get to where I am now, which is to get the position which allows me to do both. It allows me to learn new things. It allows me to teach that to other people. And I feel this kind of uh, a thought process of thinking about what is it that you really like doing without ne necessarily attaching it to a particular job title just yet is really valuable to understand as early as possible because you're going to be fine you're going to find a job and you don't have to worry about the title as much but what is much more important is understanding what is it that you really like doing and i feel even then i already had an idea what is it that i wanted to do and as it turned out i was just fine it, it took a little bit of time but i was fine and uh that may be like a very broad um, explanation or it could be very narrow depending on how you see it but the way I perceive it is acquiring new knowledge by the virtue of setting up new experiments and so on and so forth I don't know I guess I was just burned I was just burned by doing that the research that I was doing where 85% of what you do it fails yeah, I mean, maybe that just speaks to the qu my quality as a researcher than anything else. I mean, if you haven't experienced so much failure than me, I, I salute you. That means you're doing something right. But uh, I definitely felt burned at the time, and um, that's that's fine. I feel like it's such a arduous marathon of um, of failures, of um, really hard experiences, and. Um, uh, a lot of pressure to to deliver to graduate i realize now uh, a year later that i took a right step of taking a step back from from doing this kind of research i don't think i would have been 
nearly as happy if I had continued doing exactly the same thing. I don't want to associate my life with doing the things that fail more most of the time and then at the end you get something that works. Actually, in my job now, the reason I feel so much happier is because I don't face as many failures um, as I did in research because a lot of my work is actually speaking with people and I feel a lot more at ease and much more confident about what I have to say to them or, again, learn. And there is a lot less perceived failure, at least in my mind, about that. Yes, there's some, I may not convince somebody about something, but I don't perceive it as failure. I think it just depends what you consider as a failure and whether or not you can deal with it. That really just shows what what's your comfort comfort zone is and where do you find yourself more uh, you know at peace in definitely doing bench science bench research and experiencing failures when something goes wrong i didn't enjoy that nearly as much as i enjoy what i'm